All right, welcome to Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. This is a brand new series here on the Apex Hound 2 channel. And this is basically a remake of the 2007 game. They've completely overhauled it, changed everything. Uh, I believe like only the, the basic main plot is the same. Uh, they've reworked everything else from quest design um, to everything, basically. So yeah, nothing is... is as similar as it was back then anyway, but we're gonna check it out here together Please do drop a like if you want to see this as a series but Yeah, I really like the recent Sherlock Holmes games that I played They're not like amazing or anything, but they're just really fun kind of contained stories uh, And I love the detective work that you have to do in them So let's jump in and start off a brand new series as I said drop a like and leave a comment down below if you want to see more Sherlock writes everything down check the case book Yada yada, you might have missed something. Dead end, the mind palace is your compass in an intricate web of crime. Check it if you don't know what to do next. Let's jump in and see what it's all about, baby. I don't think I ever played the 2007 one, the original, so uh, I'm excited to check this out for the first time. You got a size difference of the, of the wheels on that bike. Good lord. That's Britain, all right. The shadow over London. Baker Street. Dr. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidier houses in war-torn Afghanistan. <laughs> Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts of today's newspapers. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman And Sherlock needs severe help. Welcome to the game. Use L to move around and press X to interact with objects. I do remember this room, though. Um, I believe I have... I, 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 one of the other Sherlock Holmes games definitely had this room in it as well. A little little hobby for Sherlock and Watson. Hobby for Sherlock and Watson. I don't really remember it, though. Okay. We can interact with objects by pressing X. I'm guessing we want to interact with those newspapers. There we are. Okay. Inspect. Scandinavian what? Tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps during a recent visit to London by Swedish Princess Ildur. Chief among the scandals was the embarrassment of the British diplomatic corps as a result of the unexplained disappearance of, uh, of the pri- Oh wait, why does it look like that's a new bullet point? That was, that was what confused me. Unexplained disappearance of Princess Ildur's personal bodyguard, the longtime member of her inner circle, took the opportunity to explore London while off duty and never returned from his late promenade. A spokesman for the police offers assurances uh, the advertiser that they are confident the bodyguard will be located. As he is a striking representative of the Scandinavian people, a man like that gets noticed whether by his peers or at the gentlemen's clubs or the fair nightingales who comfort them. Local gossip, all of it uninteresting. Sherlock Holmes ain't interested in local gossip. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes insists on delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. <laughs> okay. I don't see the Strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's preposterous. My dear fellow, Life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who- No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. This man, bro, is out of control right now. Sherlock needs need help. Being a little too meticulous. All right, come on, Watson. It's rainy today. Why not dress, dress in something appropriate? Ah, we can get on our uh, an outfit for a rainy day, huh? 
Okay. We got some slick outfits here, boys. Ugly beige suit. The worst suit in the game. Just awful. <laughs> I love that. Top hat. Deer stalker hat. Looks like it would suit you. We got glasses. Ooh, we got the mustache that doesn't even look like it's actually there. That's weird as hell. <laughs> Why do the beards not look like they're actually there? They're like, whoa, that's creepy. Maybe once I come out of the screen, they will be, but... All right, Watson's wake, waistcoat. Traditional Ukrainian outfit. Stand tall, stand pray. All right, what outfit is going to be good for the rain, though? It doesn't really seem like any of these are good for the rain, if I'm being quite honestly... Quite perfectly honest. We'll put on a marine uniform, I guess. That'll work. Ah, there we go. Wind coat. That'll work. Oh, put on a hat, it's telling me. Ah, okay. okay. That was all it wanted me to do, was put on a bloody hat. Let's put on the, the deer stalker hat. All right, there we go. I have done that. I've put on a hat. Why is it telling me I haven't put on a hat? I put on a bloody hat, mate. All right, I can skip it. Okay. There we go. I just had to skip it. We are looking kind of raw right now, though. Baker Street. Hello. Hello, young boy. All right, where's the dustbin? Casebook. You disposed of it before entering the building because the pages were soiled. There's still a chance it might be found in the dustbin. All right, where's the dustbin? Right here. Let's have a look, eh? That doesn't look great. Whatever the hell that is, I don't know. What is that? A cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. Oh, great. That's the newspaper, you mistaken, but... Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirtied, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. See, Watson? The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. Is it? Get the strand. Get your copy of the strand here. All right, I want, Sorry, Mr. I want it, mate. I just sold my last paper. Blast. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. Any breaking news today? The dock accident. It's the talk of the town. Yes, yes. Besides the tribe on the front page, anything about burglaries? I'm not sure, sir. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm, like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. <laughs> Watson. Cool, now I can take the day off. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books. Up to his chin they were. Never heard of a well-read assassin. Looks can deceive. Hence the appeal of disguises. Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. <laughs> I had to protect the merchandise. And all I could see was him kneeling at your door. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. All right, you cheeky little bastard. <laughs> You've got a new question in your mind palace. Open the case book and then navigate to the mind palace. Okay. Cool. Who ruined the strand? The book from Barnes, Cactus. Unpin evidence. Okay, so I could pin it to either one of these if I wanted, right? Okay. Hmm. Ah, they match. Barnes, the local bookseller, ruined the newspaper. Mr. Barnes is involved in the scheme. The newsboy said the suspicious man was carrying a stack of books, and this morning, Mr. Barnes, the local bookseller, delivered a novel for Dr. Watson. We did hear that earlier, actually, yes. A cactus spine for assassination, a loud bang, a visit to Mr. Barnes is in order. Okay, sounds like a plan. He's come back. But you said you just sold, sold your last paper, you little rat. Yeah, he sold, yeah, sold his got... last paper and now he's trying to... Oh no, I don't like that. All right, we're looking for Barnes Booksellers. Okay. Where could it be? Back down this way first, I guess. <laughs> the face could on you that is No, sir, I've never heard of it. All right, he doesn't know where it is. Never heard of Barnes Book? Come on, man. Wait, Barnes Bookshop? Where's that? Oh, there it is. Okay, Barnes Bookshop, here we go. You look a little bit suspicious over here, lady. Dreary, isn't it? Oh, you're the flower lady. Okay. Could use the rainfall. Oh, a dog. 
Hello there. What's your name? Lily. I know. Not very original. I still love her. Aw, she's so cute. Lily, the cutest dog I've seen. Alright, hello, Barnes. Do you even have enemies that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. Yeah, Cordona from the last games. Observe that shit. Sir, what are you up to, you scumbag, huh? Oh, he's got bags under his eyes. He's been overworked. Oh, look at that. His hands are all dirty. Newspaper ink, potentially. Something down here on his knee. Leans heavily on his right leg. He's got a sore left leg. Hey, same as me right now. And then on his shoes, got some dirt. No, wants to look taller. He's got high heels on. All right. Mr. Barnes has developed a limp and large bags under his eyes, the results of long hours of inter intense work. He is not very confident and tries to appear taller by wearing high heels. It seems unlikely that such a person would be involved in a murder plot, even if the ink on his hands suggests he is the one who soiled the newspaper. Nevertheless, Mr. Barnes could still be a pawn in a bigger plan without his knowledge. Blackmail victim. Mr. Barnes has large bags under his eyes, the result of poor sleep and stress. He has developed a limp, likely the result of an attack. He wears the high heels to look taller or stronger, presumably to, to deter future violence. And Mr. Barnes is being threatened by someone who might be involved in a plot against me. Uh, which is more likely? I think the blackmail victim actually adds up to make the most sense, right? That's just my opinion. Mr. Barnes, I could be wrong. a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. You just run? Who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now, will you please? Mr. Holmes. Golly, I did not see you coming. Shut up, dude. <laughs> Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we, uh, reschedule in a month or two? Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. No, really deep in the weeds with, uh, with important things. Well, help yourself to any book. Just take it and pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. He definitely doesn't, doesn't seem like the seem type. Himself. Why is yeah, no shares? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. All right, let's do it. Have a look. Got a ladder, ladder with a broken, broken thing? Okay. Recently, judging by the freshness of the wood. Okay. Oh, there's a little dog here? So, Barnes has a dog now. <laughs> He's a good boy. He's a good boy. I love the addition of all these dogs in the game. Awesome. I could hardly imagine anything more macabre. All right, a couple of books here. Everlasting plants, a catalog, a catalog of exotic plants on Barnes counter. The name of the catalog reads "Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love." I wonder if that's something to do with the poison potentially. And then there's another. Basics of crypto cryptography. Analysis. Okay. Cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. I see. Cryptology books at Barnes. Got a couple more things. Hello. Oh, stack of books. Could that be the stack of books An from earlier? Improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. It does, but for what In reason? Language of Mycroft's secret agents. It's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. Mm-hmm. The finest view London has to offer. All right. Try again. Uh, apologies, but I can't hear you. Please come back later. Barnes right. has always been a little odd, but this is uncharacteristic even for him. All right, we got a lot of new stuff here. Let's see. Uh, there's a bouquet, a bouquet of dead flowers in the window of Barnes' bookshop. It is placed on an improvised stand made from a pile of books. It seems that Mr. Barnes wants to make sure that his flowers are clearly visible. Mycroft's agent used similar signals to communicate with each other, I see. Maybe we could ask her, uh, the, the lady with the flowers, about these? People don't tend to come out for flowers when it rains. Perhaps I should try selling door to door. Perhaps? Okay, maybe we can figure out something about these flowers here. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses? Our national emblem. God save the queen. It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. I see. 
familiar spine. This is what I found in my dustbin. Ah. Maybe we could ask her about it? The pot is damaged. The blow was severe, but softened by something. Could we ask her about this, potentially? Anything tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes? It's Observer. You lying, lady? She's wearing makeup for beauty or concealment. Morning brooch, honoring deceased husband. All right, anything else? Something on her neck here. Unusual for work attire, luxury fabric, okay. Distant look, avoids eye contact or distracted, potentially. And what is the last thing? Down to her, her shoes. Changed shoes upon arrival, okay. Miss Fleming wears a morning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her dress is made from expensive fabric that is not suitable for work. Her shoes show no traces of mud. She must have changed them when she arrived. Her eyes constantly dart around the street, perhaps seemingly in search for something. Perhaps she is waiting for someone. While Mrs. Fleming cherishes the memory of her departed husband, she is trying to move on as suggested by her makeup and nice outfit. Perhaps she is dressing to attract someone's attention or simply because she has learned to love herself again. Still grieving, Miss Fleming uses makeup to hide her tear-stained cheeks. Her dress is made from expensive fabric that is not suitable for outside work. Her shoes show no traces of mud. She tries to bury her grief by dressing extravagantly. She still wears a mourning brooch in memory of her late husband. Her gaze, always staring off into the distance, reveals her emotional detachment. Taken as a whole, one must conclude that Miss Fleming is still reeling from her tragic loss. Yeah, I'll say still grieving. I don't know, really, but we'll go with that. Some of these ones you just gotta kind of guess. My condolences, honestly. Mrs. Fleming. Mr. Holmes? Your husband's death. You're clearly still in mourning. Oh, no. I loved him more than anything, of course, but that was some time ago now. Life goes on. A lesson we all learn, one way or another. Okay. Well, then. That's not the case. She's lying. I'm afraid I can't help with that, Mr. Holmes. Okay. Cactus in a crackpot. things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove, and the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless, though you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back from my break. Huh. Interesting. Dead flowers on display. Flowers barn shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting the flowers are for me? It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. Ah. Huh. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No, not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? <laughs> I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. Uh -huh. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then, we've never spoken. I often see him staring through the shop window. Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would edge such longing onto his face. Okay, well that got dark all of a sudden. Have a look at my flowers. They will not bite unless you touch their thorns. Okay, we got something else here. Okay, why is Barnes acting so strangely? Okay, we got ooh, a lot of different things here. Why is Barnes acting so strangely? Um, cactus in a cracked pot, definitely. And um, what else could be involved in that? Cactus buying potentially poison. Maybe roses for sale? None of these seem to work. Uh, maybe I have to do all of them at once. It's not like, let me do like two at once. So maybe I gotta do observations. Cactus buying potentially poison. That didn't work. I'm confused. This one doesn't really make as much sense as the last one to me. Like last one you could just link two together and it was easy. I don't know what the hell's going on this time. Oh, there we go. Okay, we got the three of those. Mr. Barnes is in love with Miss Fleming. I see. Barnes displays a bouquet of dead flowers to attract the attention of Miss Fleming, a florist. He may hope she will come into his shop and give him watering advice, or it could simply be a symbol of desperation. Barnes anonymously gifted her a cactus while he ordered from the catalog on his counter. A questionable choice, but for Barnes, a symbol of his eternal love since the catalog presents these cacti as immortal. 
Plainly, this is the same cactus he dropped on the strand outside 221B Baker Street. Now to hear the full story. All right, let's go talk to him, I guess. Hmm. I, uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Come on out, buddy. Better talk to you. Mr. Barnes, I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. Stick it. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. <laughs> I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. This man. So, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy too, and when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. I am useless with this sort of thing. I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. That... Yes, you are correct, of course. I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Don't we all? Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of the Strand here all along? Well, <laughs> naturally. I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages right, and Bloody translation and... and uh, yes, yes, up. okay. Just give me the paper. Read between the lines. Help Barnes with his love life. Salt Peter explosion rock stocks. Locals at the Port of London had a rude awakening last night with loud bangs, uh, bangs rather, and thick red smoke disturbing the peace. Merchant ship Mosca had docked at Pier N3 in the early evening en route to Europe. These black lines on the on the uh, black dots on the side look so much like bullet points. It really distracts me when it was rocked by several concussive explosions. The Port Authority has yet to comment on the incident, and it is unknown if any crew members were on board at the time. Eyewitnesses report seeing salt peter leaking into the river, but with, it, with the area still off limits to workers and the public, it may be some time before we have a full account Come, of what Watson. transpired. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. Me too, brother. <laughs> Poor guy. All right, let's go discover this Saul Peter uh, well, explosion that was an then. Utter waste of time. Hey, it An wasn't. assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say, Doctor? No. Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition, and that perhaps, if ill-applied, I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. Doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. I mean, what could be? A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. I said I knew just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. 
Let's go. Oh, good. Well, his house is nearby. Come. All right, let's go figure it out. Stenwick's mansion? Oh, he's got a mansion. Right this way? All right, you lead the way, Watson. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, is this his Not mansion right here? Now. Oh, yeah, this is awesome. Stenwick's Manor. Oh, my God, this place looks huge. You got the coppers here already? Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Lockhart? Sir, the inspector has nothing to do with it. I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimmy here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. And it's my superiors who made this decision, sir. Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, real crimes. A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find him here breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Have there been other disappearances? What if he's in trouble? Of course, here and there. But when life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. Yeah, <laughs> you heard yours. that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant, so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. When did you last see your servant? Kimmy here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. He must have escaped the night before yesterday. Okay. Tell me about Kimmy here. He's foreign. A Maori. All the way from New Zealand. Biggest man you've ever seen. And as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. He doesn't speak a whit of English. Never bothered to learn. But I made do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. Okay. He doesn't even speak a lick of English. English. His shack is in the garden. You can't miss it. Did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. I take it this is the first time Kimahira has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery and brought him here to England in the first place. Is there any reason Kimahira may have left? I should think not. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. Cabbage? Did Kimmy here make off with anything of value? Heavens no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. Still, he must have fled with some money on his person? No, no. I kept his wages in my safe. For security. All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We shall first take a look around the mansion. Go ahead. I'll be here, mentally drafting my complaint. This guy seems fun. <laughs> <laughs> Mentally drafting my complaint. Alright, so we're not going inside then, we're checking outside. Right, let's unpin that. Well, we actually know where it is, so no need to have that pinned. We we'll just have nothing pinned at the moment. We'll have a look around for the for any evidence of the big Maori. I mean if he's that big, surely yeah, he won't be he won't be easy to miss. The statue's head is missing. Was that always missing or that some sort of rage thing. I'm guessing it was always missing, but we'll have a look anyway. Nope, the head's down at the side here. Oh. Big footprint? Knee print hiding. Hmm. Looks like a knee print. Ah. Huh. Okay. And then there's a footprint. A shoe print, roughly size 11, with a worn out sole. These are a workman's boots. Okay. And chewing then... tobacco. Someone knelt here. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. To read the ground like an open book. Okay. With enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past. Press O1 to see imagination nodes. Interact with nodes to begin and then recreate an accurate version of events. Okay. We do that. I'm guessing we can't do that now, right? Oh, we 
you can, you can kind of see it. But that's about all we can see for now. Okay. Anything else worth having around here? This is a little shock, I'm assuming. Concentration helps you pick up smaller details about the world around you. When you see a wavy green circle, press R1. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already did that for that other thing. I know what to do. I know what I'm doing down here. Oh, there's something out here. Potentially. Oh. The rag reeks of smoke. Someone plugged the chimney. Okay, so someone definitely is trying to kill this fool. What the bloody hell is this? Grain? Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. Someone hit their head on the grain? Then we got a bloody telescope? A like small navy spyglass. Spyglass? Okay. That's kind of random. Unless he was using that to spy on him from when he was knelt back down over there. That makes sense. A Maori nose flute. Ngurus, they're called. Ngurus? Clothes made of hessian. Is Stenwick really so miserly? The hell? Bones? Button chops. The remains of a meal. Okay, thank God. <laughs> what the bloody hell is this then? A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, Doctor. Ah, I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. Ah. The ashes are long since cold. All right. I. Oh, I can set it up in here, huh? No air coming through it. There we go. All right, it was eating something. That's about it. Can't really see too much more than that, I guess. Okay. There's a little, uh... This a lock, lock pad here. Unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. A lock with an unusual keyhole. Let's check this thing out, I guess. Where does Kimiha's trail lead? Okay, let's have a look. We got the spyglass. And then... If it's those two... What would be the link between them? The clothes? Would it just be this? No, it's that one is right. Okay, that one is right, but the other one is not right. We ask him about some of this stuff? I guess we could. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's harsh. Are they Kimahias? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it distracting. The door to your garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. Kimi here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. Oh, okay. Are you joking? Why would I know this? Do you happen to know Kimi here's shoe size? I wouldn't have the foggiest, but I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, oh, he so then he wouldn't have a boot print. To shoes. All right, that's not him then. Has Kimi here ever indulged in tobacco? No, the man doesn't even drink. Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimi here's expenses since he struggled with the currency. I would have known if he used tobacco. Okay. That's a big update then, definitely. But I need one more blue. And the ones that I had right weren't right. Or else they were right, but I just put them in the wrong in, wrong order or something, so then I don't get to use them properly. I'm not sure Why how it works. Are you still here? Yeah, shut up, bro. Sick of you. Oh wait, there's something down here. Ah. How did I miss this? A scrap of Hessian. I thought it was the same one as the other one. Oh, that'll match up with the clothes then, right? Wrap a in a broken box. These How did I not see these before? Boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them. Hmm, okay. He was clearly attacked. There's this thing with the face, this face thing as well, this face print being in the in the grain. All right. Okay, then. Oh, wait, there's something down here now. Uh-huh. 
Oh, now we got this. Parallel tracks with wheels. Watson, you are consistently getting in the way tracks. here, my man. They seem fresh. Okay. They seem fresh, so that means that we now have three things in a row available to us, is it? Wait, there's another one here. Oh, shit. Okay, now we're cooking. Oh, shit. Okay, so he was knocked down. Ripped over the box. Did someone do that to him, though, is the question. Let's see, next. Yeah, okay. We gotta have these in the right order, I think. Is this right? Well, he would have had to sit there to eat his meal, right? Oh, wait. Didn't see that. Uh-huh. Is he still there on the previous one? No. Okay. What are these three? This one is here. He's tripping back over it. Then the Maori guy is tripping back over it. Uh, or else there's one where... I think what they were both there. He's dragging him. And he's putting his face in the grain. He fell? I don't know. But this guy... What is he doing in this picture? Chewing tobacco. This guy's chewing tobacco. But we, we know it isn't the Maori guy because he didn't wear shoes. So it's either this guy... Yeah, that's better. That lines up more, I think. And the spyglass there on the uh, on the thing as well. Okay, that lines up for sure. All right, now we need to find the other two. Oh wait, is this Hang a on. tanning far, ah. a Maori water spirit, or something else? Either way, it's giving me chills. Indeed, giving you chills, Stemwick is it, sir? Makes a servant live in a tool shed. You think you know someone? We go out and look at this thing now, or? Nay, okay. Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimahir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it, nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. All right, that's it. Can't do any, we can't provide any more evidence than that. It's where I had the spy man, man glass last time I came to him. whiskey with your name on it. All right, shut up. Oh, wait. Here we go. There's something here. Ah, oh, there's the key. I am stupid. I didn't even see this. I've been looking around for so long, I didn't even see this key. I am stupid. Okay. Well, then. What do we do now? Aha. Perhaps we can open this next now. All right. Let's see what the, what the options are. Okay. So he opened it with the key. Or... Or he opened it with the key. I think it was this other guy. Because why would it be hit? I don't know. It wouldn't make much sense for it to be the other guy, right? But wait. If this one goes... I, I feel like this is the other one, right? Where he has him knocked out or whatever. Yeah, there we go. But th that wouldn't make sense because then he's injuring himself, right? I don't know. I don't feel like any of those make sense. But I'm trying to make sense of it. So now we have to get something that matches up with the with the tracks here. Can we go through here? This lock is quite unusual. Yeah, yeah I know that. Can that I fucking use the key though? Bent to the right. I can't use the key, okay. Oh, I think I know what to do. I need to actually get the tracks out here, is it? Yeah, the trail in St Captain Stenwick's garden. There we go. Okay, so I, I'm stupid. I've been not actually selecting the thing that I was supposed to select while you're matching them up. Ah, I am brain dead, holy shit, okay. I understand now, I understand what I'm supposed to do. It is unlikely to have been used recently is what they're saying though. Oh, okay. Then that's not it, is what you're telling me. Ah, here we go, more parallel tracks. Often grass doesn't grow here. There are similar tracks near Kimi, he has shack, pile of logs, fallen. Someone moved a cart to this spot ah. and then took it elsewhere. 
can't see it anywhere in the garden. I see. So they took him away on a garden cart, potentially. I see, I see, I see. Let's see what this one is. Did they take him away? Yes, let's try validate this now and see if that is correct. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I feel this could be close. Oh, one of them's wrong. The second one is wrong. Wait, which one is that? I know which one that is, the one in here. Oh, it was this one, okay. So it was the one that was, it, I just was wondering what the hell that ball was. It didn't look like a rag, but that should be validating it correctly now. Okay. Surveilling from afar, the intruder waited for a window of opportunity. When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney Oh, pipe, that's what he was doing. it with a cloth. That's what Kimihir those were. inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final mm -hmm. challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimahir had the key in his shack. All right then, we figured it out. Sweet. All right, let's go tell the let's go tell the boss. I guess we could do this first. All right, so chewing tobacco remnants, clothes made of hessian. What are notable features of the abductor? The spyglass and the chewing tobacco remnants are the notable abduct. Uh, and then another one. What would be the last one? Footprints. I think that would that would all lead together, right? No, one of them, one of the blue ones was wrong. We don't have that yet. No. Okay. We don't have the other notable feature of the abductor. Interestingly enough. Okay. That's interesting to me how that first part, the chewing tobacco remnants, was not his. Okay. Put on a nasty suit, the Cordona suit. The days of of uh, Cordona suit, no jacket. We'll rock the no jacket. I'm taking off the hat, too, because the hat's kind of nasty. Not going to lie to you. Uh, I'm actually going to keep on a, a larger suit just because it's raining. That's slick. That's slick, Sherlock. I respect it. Get your hair back out. Let's get your hair wet, son. Get this thing started. Let's get this party started on a Saturday night. Maybe we'll get uh, the other part of this once we get the key off this man. That makes sense, I think. You'd best have found something by now, gentlemen. Ah, but I have. You said that you checked the shack earlier. Did you notice the cart tracks near it? Now, one ought to expect a servant to make regular use of such a thing. Indeed, I would have overlooked the detail were it not for the cart's absence. If, as you say, Kimahir never leaves your estate, then where did it go? I expect answers from you, Mr. Holmes, not questions. All right, then. I fear that someone may have spied upon Kimahir. Likely the owner of the spyglass I found earlier. It appears they were watching for some time, as there was an impressive amount of chewing tobacco on the ground. And your point? I found the residue of narcotics in Kimahir's brazier. There are several explanations, perhaps your servant's recreational interest, or an attempt at poisoning. Cut to the chase, Mr. Holmes. This, this man, bro. I won't keep you in suspense any longer, Captain. Kimahir was abducted by the owner of the spyglass. When your servant fell asleep, he slipped a narcotic into Kimahir's brazier to make him sleep even more soundly. In order to carry a man as large as Kimahir, the intruder stole the cart and rolled him right out of your garden. Now, hold on. All this simply to tell me what I already know. Why How did you know that? You found him yet? I only arrived a moment ago. It is, frankly, incredible that I have already deduced so much. Every second you dawdle here, waiting for me to stroke your ego, is another second wasted. Mm -hmm. I'm not interested in the how, the why, or the who. I am only interested in recovering That's my a human being. Spare me the claptrap, boy, and go and fetch my servant. This guy's an asshole. Truly, there is no better evidence of a man's nature than the way he treats those who help him. And you, sir, are a brute. The cruelty of your ignorance about the Maori people, your right. selfish Tell him, Sherlock. Plans, kidnapping. Uh, Sherlock and Sherlock uniting. Is, Captain, we're telling you this for a reason. The intruder fled through the garden door, and we need a key to follow his trail. Well, then you should have led with that. Here you go. I hope you'll return soon with good news. And in the meantime, please teach your companion the art of brevity. Yeah, learn yourself, dickhead. 
go head to head with this scumbag. I'll take him on. I don't care. I'll get this Maori lad to bloody sock him. We'll save the Maori lad and we'll do 2v1. Have him, uh, have him help us out instead, you know? All right. We got a large seagull there. All right, which way do they go? This way. The tracks are going this way. Okay. But this was blocked off last time, though, so let's see. Weird doll with an A on it. Say? One leg missing. Oh, there's a note there? What does it say? I don't know. Fucking pick the note out and see. No seams or torn fabric on this doll. Likely one-legged by design. Oh, weird. Hey ho, street pigeons and roof ravens and other treasure hunters upon you. With a clue in hand, it's up to you to find all the dolls. Oh. I used to do lots of those oh, in my, my childhood That's creepy. myself and Oh, here's the Is card. Call for help. A bad joke. Or both. Better not risk leaving this matter ignored, don't you think? I guess so. All right. So there Sturdy was a rope, rope here. Professionally tied in a Portuguese bowline. This knot is often used by sailors to create a bosun's chair. Okay, we got... Is that his wallet? Or what is it? Something. Roy Ray Soulsby. Could that be the name of our man? It definitely could be. A strange substance. I have my suspicions based on the color and consistency, but would you care to hazard a guess, Doctor? Well, it's odorless, but from the way it absorbs water, I'd say salt peter. Uh -huh. Then we're in agreement. Well done. Yep, that links up then. Wheels that links up, baby. Him a year's cart, I gather. Uh huh. It's all starting to come together now. The investigation scene has been completed, man. All right, let's have a look at this, and let's have a look at this. Oh yeah, this is the correct one. The sailor's not the calling card, I think, would be the last one. Uh, that would make the most sense. I, or not. Okay. How are these not notable features of the abductor? I don't understand. <laughs> like, it doesn't even make sense. The sailor's not! Oh, okay, because it was that he was a sailor. I understand now. Okay. Kimihia's abductor is a sailor. Ah, ha, ha. The other one seemed like more reasonable... Um, things. Okay, his... This definitely links because that's his wallet with Salt Peter. We're going to that strand with Salt Peter. Yada, yada, yada. And then the last one here would be the abductor's trail, I guess, right? That would make the most sense, I think. Abductor is a sailor. I mean, we don't... That doesn't really help us. But it does, I guess. Okay. All evidence points to the Port of London. I guess because we're going to a port, yeah. We now know that Kimahia's kidnapper is most likely a sailor, that his wallet bears saltpeter residue, and that there was a recent saltpeter accident in the Port of London. Everything suggests that to find Kimahia, we must head to the Port of London. There is no time to lose. It is vital that we find a camp to the Port of London immediately. All right. There you go. We've figured it all out so far. Um, not easily, but we've, we've, we've done it. Not so useless after all. The saltpeter accident. Doctor, do you recall? The Port of London. Of course. The footwear, the spyglass. Indeed. We shall need to take a cab there. All right, sounds good. Let's take a cab to London. To the Port of London we go. And there's a cab waiting for us right here. Absolutely perfect, son. Will you take us to the Port of London, sir? All right, I think we finished everything the we wanted to London, do here. Please. I will show you where to stop. I will show you where to stop. To hell in a handcart. Complete chapter one. All right, that's the end of chapter one. Awesome. I don't know how many chapters there is. I think there might be eight chapters, if I remember reading correctly. Though we could do uh, one chapter per part, potentially. But yeah, that's where we'll end this part. Anyway, we'll see what, if there's a cutscene here. I'm sure there probably is some sort of cutscene as we go, as we come to London. But yeah, really enjoying it so far. I, I just, as I said, I really get addicted to these games because it's, it's so Holmes, fun figuring out these cases. What compelling mystery we have stumbled upon. Perhaps I have the premise of my next novel. Huh. On kidnapping does not a story make. Stop! A black cat crossed before us. It's a bad omen. I did not take you for the superstitious type, Doctor. Such things are mere fantasies, tricks of a feeble mind. One imagines a physician would keep a surer footing in reality. Perhaps, before the war, my time abroad was difficult. Once, I came across an Afghan, bleeding, who I could not save. He pressed a rosary into my hand. A gift, he said, so as to gain God's favor. After that... Dr. Watson? Yes, well, I shan't get into details, but sometime later I found myself lost in the desert. The hydration set in, and things grew ever more dire. The man's words came to me. I said a prayer, and 
placed the rosary on a rock. A gift to gain God's favor. And you were rescued? Yes. A detachment of British soldiers found me. To whom I'm grateful. But without their diligence, you would not be standing here and I would not have this case. I'm sure you have another explanation prepared, Mr. Holmes. But I think I shall cling to the occasional superstition all the same. To each his own, Dr. Watson. So long as it does not interfere with my methods, do it. We must press on, cat or no cat. The question remains, why abduct Kimmy here? That is the question. And will it be answered in chapter two? That is the question. All right, there we go. Thank you guys for watching. Really appreciate it. Make sure to drop a like. As I said, it is the best way to let me know that you do enjoy the content. We're going to save the game there, our first save. Uh, manual save, our first manual save anyway. But thanks for watching, really appreciate it. We'll be back with more Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. If you want to see it, drop a like and I'll see you next time. It's been my pleasure to serve you all. See you soon. Peace out.